Should Paolo Garbisi have had a second shot at the polls in Italy's Six Nations draw with the French folks? It's a bit of a hot button issue after the game. We'll go through the laws. Some other times this kind of thing has happened. I can think of a particular high profile example from a decade ago when the Irish played the All Blacks. And um, yeah, the timeline of events and you guys can let us know your thoughts. So if you missed it, the Italians had a first chance to win in, in France for, for bloody donkey's years. A penalty to win the game. And credit to the ref for rewarding a penalty. Like you might think, but a home field advantage. Dude's in his first Six Nations game. 30-year-old ref, Christoph Ridley. The Italian Zuliani gets over the ball and he awards the penalty. But it's in the lining up of the penalty that the kind of drama happens. Now, there's 15 seconds left on the shot clock remember you get a minute to kick your penalty 15 seconds left on the clock when the ball falls off the tee now the camera angle was looking at Galtier at that particular moment but when it hits back to to Garbisi he's down picking the ball up to put it back on the tee so I am assuming that that is the reason the French player charged figuring that if the ball has gone off the tee maybe it's live but the law says the opposing team must stand still with their hands by their sides from the time the kicker starts to approach the kick until the ball is kicked. So the ball hadn't been kicked, so the ball is clearly not live. And the ref remonstrates the guy to say, you can't charge. That's pretty clear. You could argue that there's already been an infringement because he's already kind of approached within the 10 meters. You're not allowed to charge. He's charged. Doesn't say that specifically. He hasn't approached the kick yet. So he doesn't have to be standing with his hands by his sides just yet. But common sense says you can't charge a kick. One could certainly argue he's already infringed. Um, then he puts the ball back on the tee when there's eight seconds left. He's, he's finally got it back on. It takes him about seven seconds to put the ball back on the tee. And then um, when there's six seconds left on the clock and Garbisi is still getting ready to hit the kick with a second kind of going through his process in a very quick manner, um, another player approaches him, seemingly going to charge him down, but his own players kind of call him off. So you could also argue that one's an infringement. But again, Garbisi hadn't really started approaching the ball. So you could say he doesn't have to be standing still with his hands by his sides just quite yet. Three seconds left, Garbisi makes contact with the ball. Uh, during that time, there are some French players in the backfield who are moving forwards. Um, so technically, you could say that's an infringement. But then the ball hits the post, game continues on, goes into touch, and that's pretty much game over. So technically, you can definitely find an infringement there. Whether it's the guys in the backfield moving, whether it's the first guy charging down, or the second guy kind of approaching, there's definitely an infringement there. It just kind of depends on how strict you want to be with that kind of thing, because I'm sure if you looked back at the tape of every single time a penalty is kicked, from the time the guy starts approaching the ball to the time he makes contact, there's definitely guys milling about. They're not usually charging down. Because you're not allowed to charge down. But guys move around. So it depends, I guess, how, how strictly you want to look at it. My gut tells me you probably could have let that one uh, go again. Maybe that's just me thinking I want the underdog to win. How special it would have been for the Italians. Because the ref, he, after he said don't charge, he did ask... The, um, the ARs or um, the TMO, he said, what does the shot clock say? I can't see the, the, the clock. Uh, and then he kind of gestured to Garbisi to kind of get on with his kick. So Garbisi did it in a hurry. You feel like you could have just kind of stopped play, gone to the French players and said, you can't charge. Maybe let him take it again. Or if he was being real stickler, march them 10 meters and put the, t the, the penalty 10 meters closer. But uh, he just kind of went with the... just gonna get on with it so yeah i think it kind of depends on how much of a stickler you want to be and um yeah it's a tough call nigel owens did it it was a conversion and uh it's years ago but when it was tied up between the irish and the all blacks in ireland so it's a it's a home crowd like it was for this french team uh aaron cruden's lighting up a conversion he hasn't moved yet the guy's charged they don't get to him but enough that the referee rules that like that's an early charge. So when Cruden's kick misses, and Cruden had a few seconds to kind of think about it, take the kick, he misses. He lets Cruden take it again. 
and he nails it. So you could argue the ref in that situation is more kind of like sympathetic to the kicker. You could also say it's the All Blacks, so they get ruled the game differently. People tell me that all the time. Maybe not so much in recent years because we haven't been winning as much. But yeah, it'd be a big call to let the Italians take a kick away from home against the French. But mm, definitely think there's an infringement there. I feel like it would have been nice to let them take it again. Whether or not 10 metres forward kind of remains to be seen. But um, yeah, you guys let us know what you reckon. Do you think you should have let them take it again? Do you think the French have gotten a bit lucky two weeks in a row? Or do you think Garbisi had enough time and just fluffed his lines? You guys let us know your thoughts and um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.